this is Professor Marsh and this is a brief introduction to arachnids. When thinking of the scientific classification of organisms, remember kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So today we're talking about the class arachnida. So what makes up an arachnid? Arachnids have a fused head and thorax body part called a cephalothorax compared to insects that have a separate head and thorax structures. Arachnids also have four pairs of legs, meaning they have eight altogether, compared to insects that have three pairs of legs or six altogether. Arachnids also have different types of mouth parts. Those mouth parts are called chelicera, and they could either be fang-like or they could be jaw-like, meant for chewing. And that depends on the specific order of arachnids, which type of mouth they have. Also, arachnids, like insects, have pedipalps, but arachnids have these appendages that could either be very small or very enlarged, and we'll see that in the next slide. So to compare and look at where the chelicera are um, compared to where the pedipalps are and what the difference is, Compare this picture of the spider. It's highlighted red where the chelicera are, or the fangs, the mouth part of the spider. And then the blue area is where the pedipalps are, or the appendage next to the mouth part that helps the spider taste the food, as well as push it towards its fangs. Another arachnid, uh, the scorpion, has chewing type chelicera or jaw-like chelicera and the pedipalps on this type of arachnid are very enlarged and they're what we're uh, familiar with as the pinchers. Another arachnid, the whiptail scorpion, has chewing mouth parts just like the scorpion but they're not highlighted here and the green is the pedipalp and those are arm-like. They're not necessarily like pinchers but they're more like arms to grasp the prey and push it towards the food. Excuse me, towards the chelicera. Some common arachnids that you may be familiar with are spiders, ticks, and mites. You may see little red mites sometimes in your uh, garden area, and of course we've all seen spiders before. Whether or not we like them, that's a whole nother story. Some other arachnids that I wanted to include in this lecture because I personally find them interesting are um, the order Europhigi or vinegaroons or whiptail scorpions um, and they are named so because they have a tail that comes up and over their head much like a scorpion would do with its tail um, only this type of arachnid uses this tail to spray vinegar as described in your book. And recall um, all the PDF files about um, arachnids and um, posted throughout the quarter will have labels on some of the slides that say possible test picture. And this is a note for you to study that particular picture in that PDF file. Um, you may be tested on it. Um, you would only be tested on the common name of that um, arachnid or that insect, not anything more specific than just the common name. Another arachnid I find personally very interesting are pseudoscorpions, or in the order uh, pseudoscorpionida. These are so cute in my opinion because look how tiny they are. They don't get any bigger than that. Um, these are very similar to um, scorpions in the way that they have enlarged pedipalps for their size and they also have chewing uh, chelicera or jaw-like chelicera but these little critters have their stinger at the very very tip of their pinchers and that's how they subdue their very microscopic prey. Another common arachnid that you may have seen um, are harvest men and these actually are not spiders because spiders will have a waist-like structure um, separating their cephalothorax from their abdomen 
And these type of arachnids, these harvest men, do not have that waist-like structure. So let's compare the two. Harvest men, as you can see in this picture on the left, have a very round, almost solid body structure, whereas other uh, similar looking arachnids um, are these type of cobweb spiders, and they have a slender waist-like structure that separates their cephalothorax from their abdomen. So just to compare the two, this is a spider, and this is not a spider, but they are both types of arachnids. For more information about arachnids, review chapters 2, 3, and 4 in your textbook.